We're going to be covering now how does the bending moment or the shape of the bending moment in a beam influence the capacity. Because normally in design, our loads and our resistance are mainly independent. So we've got a compressive load on a column. The column's resistance is fixed irrespective of whether it's a 10 kilonewton or 100 kilonewton force on the column. The resistance is fixed. But now we're going to see with bending and flexural resistance of sections, the shape of the bending moment diagram influences the capacity. So I've drawn a truss here. And just imagine now we've got our truss and it's got lateral supports there. And we start loading it from the top however we do it and then just think about this top cord buckling so this is now spanning all the way from there to there so in and out of the the screen it can buckle sideways and if only the middle had very high forces in it let's say those ones had 100 kilonewtons 50 and zero it would buckle but the effect wouldn't be as bad because only part of the member has the maximum load in it but let's say now we increased it so suddenly that all the sections have 100 kilonewtons. As the section starts buckling, the effect gets worse and worse. So the more load across all the sections, the worse buckling will become. So it's not just the magnitude. The magnitude's 100, but if it's 100 and only in the middle, that, that may be okay. But as that hundred spreads across all the different sections, the buckling behavior gets worse and worse and worse. And that's exactly what happens with uh, beam sections because if we've got our beam now, we need to have a look at how does the shape of the bending moment diagram influence our design. Because we can think of a beam in the exact same way as we think of a truss in that A beam is just a truss but with the holes filled up. The top flange, which is in compression, acts as a member that's going to buckle. And the bottom section in tension is fine, so we don't worry about it as much. So we mainly look at then the compression flange here. And then we design between points of lateral support. So we would design now this almost as a compression element. So what I'm going to be doing now is going through and sketching some uh, different bending moment diagrams and then we're going to have a look at how do they influence capacity and where does that get accounted for. Okay, I've sketched out three different bending moment diagrams here and we're going to work out the factors that go with it. But just coming back to the question I posed just now, now in terms of how does shape of bending moment diagram influence capacity. We have our MCR, our critical moment of resistance, and that is the buckling resistance of a perfect elastic beam. So no imperfections, nothing else. It's just at what point will this perfect beam experience lateral torsional buckling? And this beam has this omega-2 in front, and then it's got a whole long equation with um, uh, synfonant, and warping torsion in it. So the long term here, we're not going to look at that now. But just have a look. Moment, critical moment of resistance, critical buckling moment, equals, and it's a direct, well, it's directly proportional to this term called omega-2. So as omega-2 rises, our buckling resistance, our moment, elastic buckling resistance rises. And omega-2 accounts for the shape of the bending moment diagram. So if we have um, these three bending moment diagrams, we're going to calculate the different values. Well, firstly, kappa, remember, is our, the ratio of our moments at the ends. So the ratio of the moment there to the ratio of the moment there. And so in this case, it'll be it's the value of the one moment over the other, but it is negative for single curvature. So when the bending moment diagram stays on the same side, it is negative. So that will just be negative one. And then with this, our omega value when we work it out is one. So this is the worst case. When there's consistent bending moment across the whole section, it is the worst case. And that corresponds to what I was showing here. When there was 100 kilonewtons all the way from one side to the other, that's worst case. It's most likely to buckle. And that's what we've got here. Consistent compression force in the flange that's going to buckle. Then we have now the case where there's moment on one side, but not on the other. So that will just be zero, the, the kappa value we work out. And here we will find out that our omega-2 is 1.75. So our 
elastic moment increases by 75% because the moment is not consistent across the, the whole thing. Now we get to the final one where it's double curvature. So a moment on one side and then opposite on the other side. So we have compression on the one side and tension on the other. And tension's good. Tension stabilizes. So here we end up then with magnitude of moment over moment. But then it's positive for double curvature. And here we end up when we calculate this, we get to an omega value of 2.5, and this is limited from, limited from 3.1. If we ran the calculations, we'd find it's, it's actually 3.1, but then um, the code limits the value to 2.5. So that means our resistance has increased, increased by 150% because of the shape of the bending moment diagram. That's why it's very important when it comes to the calculations to know how to apply this because it has a big influence on your buckling resistance. And so that takes us through three specific cases and this is now just taking the end moments. But also just remember there is a clause in our South African code in terms of if the bending moment diagram is higher anywhere along the lengths, if we had this diagram, and we have some position here which is a higher value than at the ends, we just automatically go to one. It's a conservative way of, of um, dealing with it that if we have a moment higher anywhere than at the ends, we just take it as one. There are other methods of calculating this that are a little bit uh, more accurate, but for, for our SANS South African code, that is fine for now. So that gives you an overview of how do you take the shape of the bending moment diagram and how does it influence the capacity resistance of a beam, specifically by accounting for this omega-2 value in your calculations. Thank you.